So this is a joint work between Meta and Harvard. And um, so network telemetry is critical for network management. Um, um, at Meta, net network telemetry collects um, device level data and events from hundreds of thousands of routers and switches with millions of device interfaces. It also perform device level and network wide processing that generates um, time series counters and derived network states, topologies across data centers, backbones, and edges. So telemetry is critical for many of our, uh, many of our management applications, uh, including alerting, um, traffic engineering, diagnose, troubleshooting, and more. Basically, these applications rely on the telemetry to pull insights from the underlying networks and make business critical decisions. So in this paper, one unique challenge we identify is uh, for telemetry in production is involvability. From high level, our network device and management applications are constantly evolving in order to keep up with growing traffic and new service requirements. This also creates pressure to our uh, this also creates pressure and causes constant evolving of our telemetry system. Specifically, for the underlying network, we have increasing heterogeneous devices from different vendors. Furthermore, our in-house built FBO switches open switching system got updated as frequently as software to accommodate new features and achieve efficiency. At the same time, the management applications have growing um, requirements for the telemetry data. For example, covering more types of data being real time and more accurate. So both aspects create the causes the involvability challenge of our telemetry systems. So as a quantitative example, uh, we did a measurement study to quantify the magnitude of changes for three specific components, alerting rules, um, telemetry runtime itself, and device related schemas. So we found that there are up to 30 code commits and 1,000 line of code changes per week for each of them. So these frequent and significant changes actually cause a lot of challenges for us to build a reliable telemetry system. I'm going to talk about two incidents we see in production and demonstrate challenges there. The first incident is um, from high level that we found that changes can sometimes affect many components that are loosely connected to the system. In this um, incident, the traffic engineering team see unbalanced traffic distribution for some switches. The problem is that um, the input topology misses some switch line cards and circuits. The reason for not getting this complete topology is in the device layer, the vendor changes their line card version format from integer to string. So this causes the post-processing code cannot recognize this line card version and cannot recognize this line card. Thus, the topology misses some line cards and related circuits. But due to this long causal chain, the whole diagnosis takes multiple teams over three days to finish. So here there's some miscommunication between this vendor proprietary code and um, our telemetry system. But those problems sometimes won't reveal until, for example, here the traffic engineering team found this unbalanced traffic problem. So this is not a one-off case given many vendors and um, software versions coexist in our network especially our ongoing effort of FBOS open switching that even have weekly updates. So these frequent API changes could, uh, one component could affect many other components, causing challenges for our telemetry system. The second incident is about um, data in misinterpretation in some hidden way. So we have a time series counter for 90% of CPU usage. So once this counter goes very high, um, an alert will be triggered and then further mitigation action will be adopted. For example, rebooting the switch or migrating the traffic away. Then along with the trend of um, open source switching, uh, we introduce FBOS and make architecture changes to use multiple sub switches. So now instead of having a single, um, single unit switch, we have a stack of sub switches. So each sub switch has, also has such 90% their counters. However, the upper alerting layer is not aware of this sub switch's architecture change. So we actually um, average all the 90% counter of sub switches and report that average value to the alerting layer. Um, this causes problem, as once we take the average, the sub switch CPU spikes, so sometimes gets smoothened and misses alerts. Finally, this causes bursty packet drops as some sub switches get too hot. Um, without any mitigation actions. So here, frequent hardware and software changes could affect data values 
and semantics in different ways and sometimes cause data misinterpretations. So to fundamentally address these two challenges to draw from the incidents, aka change propagation and data misinterpretation, we hope to bring changes to a first class citizen in the telemetry. Specifically, um, can we explicitly track API changes cross components? Can we build trust for telemetry data despite these changes? So that's a system we are presenting here, PCAT, the production change aware telemetry system at Meta. Um, PCAT has three key components, um, change abstraction, attribution, and exploration. So by change abstraction, we, we mean a uniform and general way to represent these changes so that we can easily track and use them. By change attribution, we mean a layering design that help clearly attribute change to the right components in the telemetry system. This will help limit the change propagation because of layering and track changes easily. Finally, uh, we would like a lot of occasion to explore the relations, especially um, we call dependencies among change cubes, among change, changes to explore, uh, to improve timeliness or accuracy. So we'll first talk about change abstraction. We adapt a concept called change cube from database community and find it useful in the context of telemetry system. So if you go back to the incident where line conversion change causes um, unbalanced traffic, um, there's actually a chain of changes happening on each layer. For example, the change of collection data format causes the error of collected interface data, and then missing some derived circuits, finally impacting the traffic distribution. So here, as human beings, we can easily um, identify these changes easily, but in order to let computers track them, we need a uniform representation. We use ChangeCube with um, different properties, um, entities, and layers. The property and layer basically describe which part of a network instance get changed. The layer describe um, the location where change happens. We can also explicitly draw the um, dependencies for these change cubes. For example, um, the collection data format is correlated with the collected interface data because as understanding the right format is required to parse and get the right interface data. Um, similar correlation applies to the derived circuits and traffic distribution. Further, um, the collected interface data directly derive or generate the circuit in the topology and we call it a derivation dependency. So this four dimension plus a time from our change cube definitions. So with this change cube definition, um, oh, sorry, with this change cube representation, different change cubes from different layers can be stored and changed together, can be chained together. This will help us systematically utilize these changes. We will demonstrate this point in later slides. So now um, we have the change cube abstraction. However, without a good layering design of this telemetry system, it's still hard to attribute various changes, various change cubes to the right layer. So that introduced a change abstraction in PCAT. So our telemetry system actually experienced three generations of evolving towards a layering or modular design to um, achieve change attribution. The, the Gen 1 is essentially a deeply coupled script that covers both collection models and code. Um, in Gen 2, we try to pull out the collection code into a separate layered runtime in the blue box. Um, in Gen 3, we complete such um, decoupling for collection models further and achieve a fully modular design. So in Gen 1 script, um, we have many different models that describe the device data we want to collect for different vendors and devices. We also have a, another chunk of code to collect the data from these devices. This collection code really depends on different vendors. So however, the problem is that if we want to make changes, for example, we want to add a new content to this um, giant script, uh, we need to change various vendor-dependent models and collection processes um, or co collection code in the script because that counter could involve multiple different vendors. So in the second generation of a telemetry system, we try to decouple the models from collection codes. The collection code now involves into a separate generic and layered runtime in the blue box. It provides common collection and parsing primitives to the models or model developers. In this way, um, we can change the models without um, changing the runtime or involving them separately. Furthermore, um, we can easily track and attribute changes to different layers, either model or the runtime. 
to ident identify whether the change is caused by, say, adding new counters to the models or new processing method to the runtime. But this kind of decoupling is still not good enough. Um, if we look at the model components in Gen 2, they are actually an enormous number of models. The total number is roughly equal to the number of intents, for example, 100 alarm rules on different counters times the number of vendors, for example, 10 vendors, times the number of device groups, rack switches, spine switches. So for each of these combinations in Gen 2, we need to write a separate model to describe when the specific data for a specific group of devices. In this example, the number of models could be as high as 10K. Also, this deep coupling of intents and various vendor-dependent details in the model layer really makes the model hard to define and evolve. So that's why in current Gen 3, which is PCAT, we try to separate the model further into different layers. Um, we first separate the intent model, which are used by the application to specify their monitoring needs. Uh, for example, alerting specific alerting rules about packet drops. Then we separate the data model, which describe the high-level collected data structures and meanings like um, the packet drop field in the interface data model. The application only needs to focus on their monitoring needs or monitoring intents and high-level data models, not worrying about vendor data format or collection methods. Now we separate the collection models, which specify how to collect um, from different vendors. Like here, the vendor one might use CLI command line, while vendor two use script RPC. So creating this layer of collection models allow us to capture all the changes related to vendor format and APIs, which are quite common. Finally, we separate job models, which defines um, how frequently we collect, which group of device to collect, etc. The job model captures the system aspect of changes. Um, they are changed based on the performance or scalability requirement of collections, um, independently from the internal job models. So overall, we create different layers of models, and each layer wrap different um, types or levels of vendor-specific or device-specific details. So this module design helps limit the aforementioned um, change propagation. For example, the network engineers can easily adjust collection frequencies, which is quite common for some devices. So to do so, they just need to change the job model without changing the upper data or collection models. Um, we can also track changes in much clearer, because now each change will likely happen on a specific layer. OK, so the last component of PCAT is about um, change exploration, where we show that application can benefit from tracking change changes or change cubes explicitly and clearly. We have an application called um, Topology Derivation Service. It creates derived topology from device level data. For example, based on the per interface data, topogen derived circuits to construct current network topology. Um, previously, we had topogen job running periodically, which causes outdated deri uh, derived topology because of the periodic running nature. Now, after introducing the change cube, we identify the derivation dependency between the inter collected interface data and derived circuits. Then we build a pop-up system to enable real-time derivation. Basically, changes on the interface data will trigger topogen jump running to derived circuits in real time. This reduces um, the topology derivation delay by over 100, sec 100 second average. OK, we have covered the three components of PCAT, including change abstraction, attribution, and exploration. So PCAT has been running production for a couple of years, but there's still some open questions living around. Um, the first question we have is uh, tension between efficiency and adaptivity of telemetry primitives. Um, for example, in Meta, we develop a new microburst detection solution, but it can only work on certain devices um, because of resource or programming constraints. The application cannot assume that they can capture all microbursts in the network, but only microbursts on certain devices. So this partial knowledge really makes application logic um, really complex and how to give informative insights. So in other words, um, we would need um, efficient and um, uh, efficient telemetry primitives that can adapt to different vendors or devices. So another question we have is uh, how to build a trustful telemetry. Um, given that the telemetry data may get missed or corrupted uh, in the evolving environment, but many business critical management applications like traffic engineering, they rely on the correctness and accuracy of telemetry data. To this end, we think there's a strong need of telemetry verification or validation to guarantee the 
telemetry data is trustful. So one opportunity we're thinking of might be doing cross-validation for time series counters. For example, the power utilization counter could come from both switches and um, the power distribution units. Can we utilize this redundancy to, to cross-check the correctness of collected data? So in this example, the telemetry verification will involve some kind of quantitative comparison over multiple time series counters. To summarize, um, telemetry is critical for network management, while changes should be the first class citizen in an involvable telemetry system. PCAT proposes a chain cube abstraction, adopts a layering design, and enables change aware applications. But there are still some gaps of telemetry between industry and academia. We call for more researchers on the adaptivity and validation of telemetry. Um, that ends my talk. Thank you.